Before the video starts, I just want to thank you all for 1,000 subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. And thank you for all the support in the first video. I hope you guys like this video too. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, you sh uh, subscribe. Cool, thank you. Sharks are probably one of the most feared animals on Earth. Which is crazy because they're generally pretty peaceful towards humans. You should be more afraid of a moose than you should be a shark. Sharks are also hugely popular in media. From Baby Shark to Shark Week. You don't see Dwayne Johnson hosting Bird Week. Give us Bird Week! And there's probably more films about sharks than any other animal in the world. In saying this though, not a lot of shark movies have cinema releases. Obviously you got Jaws. That's like the biggest shark movie. And off the top of my head, other films that got released in cinemas would be... The Meg. The Shallows. Shark Tale. Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Nemo. Nemo had sharks in it. Hello. However, in regards to low budget films, shark films are king. If you saw my last video, you'd know about a production company called The Asylum. They specialize in this kind of low budget film, especially shark films. Now, I went on The Asylum's Wikipedia page and I hit Control F and typed in shark. And then I skimmed all their films to look at how many shark films they'd made. Now, this is all I could find. I could have missed one. Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus, Mega Shark vs. Crocosaurus, Mega Shark vs. Mecha Shark. Mega Shark vs. Colossus, Two-Headed Shark Attack, Three-Headed Shark Attack, Five-Headed Shark Attack, Six-Headed Shark Attack, Sharknado, Sharknado 2, the second one, Sharknado 3, Oh Hell No, Sharknado, The Fourth Awakens, Sharknado 5, The Global Swarming, The Last Sharknado, It's About Time, Planet of the Sharks, Empire of the Sharks, Ice Sharks, Megalodon, Megalodon Rising, Shark Season, Aquarium of the Dead, Swim, Shark Water, and finally, Shark Side of the Moon. So, just to note, from the Asylum alone, that's 24 films. Their first film that I could see is from 1999, which means they have made on average one shark film a year. And also, just to clarify, it's not just the Asylum who makes shark films. It's freaking everyone. Like, there's absolutely tons of them. Now, personally, I freaking love shark films. Even though they give sharks a bad name, I still really enjoy them. I like watching people get eaten. Yummy! And when I heard the name Shark Side of the Moon, I don't think I'd ever been more excited for a film in my entire life. And then I saw the posters. Mwah, mwah. Dude, that's freaking beautiful. No movie has spoken to my soul this much before. Now, unfortunately, this movie is terrible. Terribly good. I truly believe if this film had a bigger budget, it would be one of the best films of all time. This movie is what Hollywood needs right now. So if you're James Cameron and you're watching the video, please don't click off, dude. Please. Now, before we get our ankles in it, I just want to start off by saying I'm not going to be too mean to this movie. You can tell, like, there's a lot of passion and fun ideas being thrown around here. Like, it's really creative and fun compared to a lot of the garbage that's being churned out even by large studios right now. And I think a lot of the issues really can be attributed to the budget. I'm not gonna lie, the film's awful. It's so bad. But like, this film knows what it is. It's not trying to be something that it's not. It, it, it feels quite self-aware throughout the whole thing. Like, it takes itself seriously, but it feels... You'll see when we watch it. Also, just if you want to watch this yourself, it is free on Tubby. We're about to get neck deep in shark-infested waters. The film starts in Soviet Russia, because of course it does. Now, there's no exact date given. However, there is a Rubik's Cube and a radio, so you know it's hell old. Now, these two scientists are talking in Russian, because of course they are. They're in Russia, and they are watching over a pool, which is guarded by a laser grid. They talk about here that whatever's in the water, who knows what it could be, is already very intelligent. They speak English and Russian already. Now, one of the scientists jumps up on the other one and they accidentally knock a bucket, which knocks out one of the lasers in the laser grid, I guess. Get your shit together, Soviet Russia. Next minute, the bucket's thrown back out of them and here they come. <laughs> this film's not screwing you around. It's instantly throwing the sharks at you. It knows what you're here to see. Now, obviously, we can make fun of the CG here. It's pretty bad. No disrespect to the CG artists who worked on this film. You did the best with what you had, okay? Here's a better look at one of the sharks. What a muscular beauty this shark is. The character design is really there. Like, this is so good, dude. Potentially, there's a lot of inspiration here from King Shark. King Shark's one of my favorite DC comic characters, dudes. Especially that Hammerhead version from the comics. I love that. Fun fact, in the Suicide Squad movie, the new one, with King Shark in it, 
James Gunn was originally going to make him a hammerhead shark, but he thought it'd be too difficult to work that into a film and make it look good. Well, look at this, James Gunn. Look who did what you couldn't. Anyway, naturally, the scientists bolt. Get the hell out of there, my dudes. But the sharks, they're killing people. I can't show what they do to this man, but you can figure it out. This shark here has a robotic eye for whatever reason, a freaking Terminator shark. The Russian military is in no state to deal with what they have created. What I really like about the sharks is that some of them look like they're going for a leisurely jog and other ones look like a toddler running around. I don't know, I freaking love it. This woman here is literally fighting off a shark human with a shoe. What a freaking hero. So these scientists have the brilliant plan of luring all the sharks to a spaceship and take off and fly away because the Russian military will not be able to fight back against these sharks. Should they have thought that through before they made them? Yes. We are not here to critique the Soviet military. We're here to critique the shark movie. Even though these sharks are gigantic, muscular, intellectual monstrosities, they cannot figure out how to open the door. So in this shot, all the sharks can be seen bashing against the door. But then one scientist decides to go out and make like a big sacrifice play and all the sharks have just left the door. As Billy Bob tries to make the ultimate sacrifice play, he launches a flare at them. Now, I don't know if he was aiming to hit one, but he misses all of them. And they all turn and give their attention to the flare for maybe five seconds. The flare gun's also made of cardboard. Thankfully, the sharks are distracted for long enough for this guy to feel like he did something cool. So he sits down and has a cigarette, and then naturally the sharks just tear him apart. I don't know what made that guy think he deserved that cigarette. He did nothing cool. Now, the spaceship stuff looks freaking sick. Like, this is well done. And the man launches into space, assumably taking all of the sharks with him. Now, the film cuts to present day. My favorite thing about present day is that this spaceship looks like it's from the freaking future. So the space crew is ready to launch. They're going to the moon. And one of the members of the crew starts feeling a little sick. She says it was bad tacos. Shouldn't have had those tacos. Because that woman was sick, they gotta find a replacement for her. So they call up this cool guy on a motorcycle who just happened to be nearby. But everyone in the crew hates him, dude. They can't stand this guy because he's an asshole. My favorite part of the present day space technology is the fact that everyone is wearing AirPods. Like instead of headphones, for some reason, they're gonna wear AirPods instead on the spaceship. The crowd here is amazing. They look like they're ready to watch a Coldplay performance. Look, I know I said the spaceship isn't a modern day spaceship and I wasn't respecting it because of that. But what it is, is a freaking sick design for a spaceship. It looks amazing. I love it. So it's only 68 hours to the moon. I don't know. Is that fast? That feels fast. Here's how long it takes to get to the moon. Wow, that's different from the movie or the same. So obviously everyone's got a different role in this ship. Um, I didn't take note of most of them. For some reason, this person is trying to make renewable energy while on the spaceship. That feels like something you should have organized before you went on the spaceship. Like, if this is such a great scientific mind, I don't think you should launch them into space. Like, get them to come up with the idea on Earth, not on the spaceship. Also, yeah, renewable energy sources you know. made a yarn. Yeah, man, I've also got some renewable energy sources going over here. Now, stuff here starts going wrong. The spaceship's got no wonky, things are going bad. But how do they prevent it from being a disaster? They literally turn the spaceship off then on again. This is literally what I do with my PC every time it has an issue. Also, you know how we just talked about the fact that they're using AirPods? Well, also on this spaceship, they're using iPads. Now the spaceship has crashed. Everyone's not looking so hot. This guy kind of just looks mildly stoked all the time. You know, I love that for him. So they're not going to the moon for the sharks, by the way. No one has any idea that these sharks even exist. Except for any Russian scientists who maybe survive and us. The audience. That's a secret for, for us only. As long as there aren't any hull breaches, no one opens any doors or windows. Who the hell about to open a door or window in spaceship? That's the first rule of spaceship. Don't open door or window, dude. Now, they gotta head out of the spaceship for reasons. A group of four of them head out. Let me tell you, this dude is stoked about being on the spacewalk. Hell yeah, my dude. You're living your best life out there in space. Living the life I could only dream of. Being in shark side of the moon. And yes, you can absolutely tell they're on a green screen. It doesn't look good. Nothing in this film looks good from now on, dude, okay? Aesthetically, the spaceship, the space suits, 
the shark people all look amazing on paper. It's just in practice they don't look very good, you know? Honestly, it's kind of downhill from here. Because look what's coming this way. Oh, holy crap, dude. What's that, man? What could it be? Burrowing through the ground like a mole. We're about to initiate first contact. And now we are in one of the slowest chase scenes in all of history. The sharks take out one of the guys here. Now, if we pause this for a second, you can see that the sharks have evolved to now wear pants. Who knows what these beasts are capable of next. And I get these people are on the moon, but this scene is so painfully slow. And just when a shark's about to get one of them... Boom. That's one dead shark. Just kidding, the shark's alive. Just kidding. Now it's freaking dead. And who is the great hero who just harpooned this shark? What is that? This is one of the most confusing shots in cinema history. I never could have expected this from the shark film. Two people just standing on the moon, not wearing suits. That's crazy, man. Now, I only thought of it when watching the scene here, but this reminds me of a different show that I've seen before. I haven't watched much of it, but do you know the anime and manga Terraformers? Like, Terraformers is a similar concept, except instead of jacked shark people on the moon, it's jacked cockroach people on Mars. But the jacked cockroach people are a little bit more of a threat than the shark people, which is a crazy thing to say, that a cockroach is more of a threat than a shark. Anyway, who are our two heroes standing before us? This honestly is one of the most baffling images in cinema history. Who the hell are these people? Why are they using spears? Where, where's the helmets? You're on the moon, man. Put on a helmet, dude. Have some respect. Put a helmet on when you're on the moon. Honestly, two of the lamest looking people I've ever seen in my life. No disrespect to them. A little disrespect. Oh, they did a cute little high five. I like that. This was not in the brochure. This was not on the brochure? Dude, you don't get a brochure, mate. This is your job. Go to moon. There's no brochure for the moon. This ain't a holiday. It's your goddamn job. Get it together. And this guy's got an oxygen tube in his nose, if you couldn't tell. When I was first watching this, I didn't know if he was sick. But believe it or not, the oxygen tube is so he can get air on the moon. Because if you didn't know, there's no air on the moon. Anyway, if you can't tell, this guy is Baby. Russian. Who do we know who's Russian who's been to the moon? That's right. The guy from the beginning of the film. That's that guy. But how does he have a daughter? Huh? How the hell's this guy got a daughter? Is anyone gonna tell this guy that the Cold War's over, by the way? Or, or are we just not gonna bring that up? This Russian guy also thought that they were there to we rescue him. Here, He's very upset that no one came to rescue him. It says here, what's the point of him going back? He's an old man. You're not that old, dude. You haven't aged a day over 25, man. Come on. We miss you on Earth, man. Oh. Now, we know who the Russian guy is, but who's this girl? Was the Russian guy pregnant when they left? Well... Check this out. What is up with her back? She's a shark. This is Akula, by the way. Her name is Akula, um, which is Russian for shark. They go to check out this dorsal fin, and this Russian guy, he doesn't take too kindly to that. He kind of blows up a little too much here, if you ask me. Like, relax, man. No need to blow up, man. She's adopted, by the way. He didn't give birth to a shark. She was adopted. So she's as much shark person as the other shark people. Now, they get in the Russian guy's car, and he says it's a tight fit. It's absolutely not a tight fit. What the hell are you talking about? This car is freaking huge. You could be chilling in the front seat, sitting in the back seat. But I do not recommend the back seat, because if you're there, you might get taken by a shark. That's right, our smiling friend Henry has been taken by the shark. Cut to the kidnapped astronaut, and he's overhearing a conversation that one of the sharks is having about maybe is this spaceship big enough for them and the eggs? And then the shark who is talking is revealed. That shark had bobbies. I guess all sharks come in different shapes and sizes. And that's freaking cool. Now they make it back to the Russian guy's spaceship. The spaceship is in no uh, fit state to go to Earth. So he just uses it as like a little house. Here, if, you know, the dorsal fin wasn't obvious enough, the shark lady does explain that she is a shark and that she has gills. She says that the sharks can survive in all conditions. That's why they can survive. Now the guy talks about his suit. So they explain the weird suits that they're wearing are designed to to protect them. They block body heat as well as electromagnetic frequencies given off by them, which apparently renders them invisible to the sharks. They do talk about what the sharks eat in this scene. Sharks apparently survive on a kind of algae, which also 
gives them oxygen and that's why they can survive on the moon. But Soviet guy is also getting his oxygen from the same algae, apparently. The cast gets given their own suits to match these other guys so they can look as drift out as them. Personally, I think the spacesuits look so much cooler. Like, these guys' outfits, they suck. I hate them. I hate them so much. I really don't know what they were trying to go for with these outfits. Suits also make sound undetectable somehow, and they also prevent you from freezing on the moon as well. Like, they preserve... They're wetsuits. They're wearing wetsuits. So their new goal is to go and rescue Henry. Uh, apparently they need Henry to help them repair the spaceship so they can take off and get home. Get home to Earth. Now, she was warned specifically to not use radio communications to contact the other members of the ship. Because the sharks can detect that. They can detect electromagnetic frequencies. So they were told specifically, do not contact them. Anyway, she immediately decides to contact them in order to let them know to not use electromagnetic frequencies. Now, when she radios into them, the connection's really spotty. She tells them to not respond, so of course they immediately try and respond. Nicole! That's literally the worst thing to do. They just told you. Now, this Mad Max-looking shark has heard the signal. I love the sharks in this dude. He looks sick, man. That's combined my two favorite things, Mad Max and the shark, man. Now, here's the shark's base. Looks pretty sick. Anyway, this skinny shark is slapping the hell out of Henry. Essentially, this shark here just explains to Henry that they want to go home. She wants to leave all the humans there on, on the moon, and they're all going to take that spaceship and fly home. For some reason, this guy is surprised by the fact that the shark person is from Earth. Like, I get that's like an alien looking entity, but also it looks like a shark. Shark's from Earth, man. So it's human. Human and shark. Like, I wouldn't have just immediately assumed they were originally from the moon. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, her plan, go back to Earth and take it over. Now, he refuses to give up the location of the ship, so she calls in the muscle. This Scar? lovely great white shark's name is Scar. That's only the only character's name I remembered in the film. Everyone else's name I had to look up again. Or I didn't look up again, and I put him in and pose. Now, Scar goes for a genius torture method. She just eats the dude's life. Yum, yum, yum. Now, considering Scar's probably only eaten algae her entire life, this must be like a, a jaw-dropping, eye-opening experience. First taste of human flesh. Congratulations. I hope one day I get to eat human flesh. I swear that's a joke. And because Scar is a very kind and loving shark, she does cauterize the wound. She doesn't let Henry bleed out. Anyway, then Henry proceeds to immediately give up the location of the ship. You should have done that before you lost your leg, mate, if you were going to give up that easy, okay? Now, hold the phone on this shark for a second because... Why they make a build like that? I would let these sharks do whatever they wanted to me. Just real quick, while editing this, I've noticed that in a lot of the shots, her ass doesn't look like this. I think they specifically inflated it for this scene. <laughs> I don't know! Also, I forgot to say this, but she is the leader of the sharks. Also, so Scar's missing a hand. I don't know if they want us to see what Scar's hand looks like in this moment. I think some, someone overlooked something there. I can't believe they caked the shark up like that. That's, that's crazy. This film is off the wall. It cuts to the newly suited up crew, and let me tell you, they look so much lamer. Anyway, here they give him weapons. These are made from Moonstone. Moonstone is the only thing sharp enough to hurt a shark. We're gonna see later in the film that... Maybe it's not the only thing. This went from looking like a really good episode of Doctor Who to a really bad episode of Doctor Who. There's a lot of range in Doctor Who. Also, fun fact about the sharks. Apparently, if you put them on their back, they can't move anymore. That's what happened earlier in the film. It's called tonic immobility. It's a reflex that sharks have. Essentially, you can put them in like a hypnotic state. That's a really cool fact, and I think it's really cool they put that in the film. It just makes the sharks seem... A little bit lame. Like these big muscular beasts, they can no longer move once they're on their back. Also, they ask how many sharks there are. Apparently, there's only a few dozen in commission at the moment. The rest are like frozen as eggs. They don't have enough food, so they're going to take these eggs back to Earth and hatch them there where there will be enough food. So here they are going to infiltrate the base to get back Henry. When suddenly a shark sneaks up on him. And here is what is one of many great action scenes in this film. A lot of the fights in this film just consist of people waving spears around in slow motion. And them kind of, them just imposing a shark nearby. Anyway, Akula is a badass and she jumps over the shark, stabs him from behind. Well done, Akula. You are certainly a cool character. 
Now they just walk through the streets of the Shark City just in the middle of the road. They're not being sneaky. Seems the direction here given was like, just look around and look vaguely kind of confused and excited. Now, jumping back to the ship, two more of the crewmates have gone out to look for their friends. They suit up in their spacesuit, but just remember, they were made earlier in the film. The sharks know they're there, kinda now. One shark knows they're there. Not all the sharks, otherwise then they wouldn't need Henry anymore. All the sharks in the film have seemed pretty slow so far, except sometimes when they're not. Like, these poor guys are running in slow motion here, and this shark is moving at super speed. Anyway, it kills this guy, whoever the hell that was. I don't know. Now, he's one of the ugliest sharks in the film, and it's, it's going for this lady now. She manages to stun it with a rock. Okay, so the only things that work on them are Moonstone and Moon Rock. Anyway, then it just tackles her and kills her. So good on her for throwing that rock. Pity it didn't work. Now, Team Nerd's inside and they've worked out a way home. And they have to get the spaceship off the ground in the next six hours or it's going to take four weeks. Yeah, there's a lot of numbers being thrown around here. We're not going to worry about them too much. But essentially, they've got a six-hour window. Everyone's got to be back on the ship. And also, the ship has to be fixed, I guess. Now, the A-team is going into the Shark Cave. Sharks just move so weird. I love it, dude. Ah! Anyway, she kicks him, and then she hits him, and then he is on his back. This guy did a lot of running just to get the shit kicked out of him immediately. Anyway, so he's on his back now, so he's helpless. He's immobile. He can't move. Like, that is a prisoner right there. Anyway, they ask him some questions. Where the hell's the prisoner at? The shark causes himself to bleed, which apparently alerts the guards. They can smell the blood in the air. So she proceeds to war crime this poor shark. May as well kill this immobile guy. Can we get some justice for the freaking sharks, dude? This is, this is sick. This is honestly sick. Anyway, they find Henry. Hooray. They only needed to do one war crime. And Henry says, ah, shit, we gotta get back to the boat or whatever. Henry, once again, is smiling way too much for someone who just lost their leg. I can't help but like Henry, though. I do like Henry. Henry's such a trooper. They just getting up and walking again. Well... Hopping. He's got a very long leg for someone who just lost his leg. And now they're getting chased by the sharks. Thank god these sharks seem to be so much slower than the other sharks. And the shark eggs are absolutely not what I expected at all. Some sharks give live birth, some sharks give birth using eggs. The eggs come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's some examples. Some sharks also give birth to live young. What's interesting about that is a lot of the live young will eat their brothers and sisters in the womb. Anyway, even though they're being chased, there's always time for a moral dilemma. So here's the ethical dilemma. This guy says we should kill all these baby sharks because they're going to bring them to Earth and they're going to kill everyone. Meanwhile, Cool is just like, these are innocent baby sharks. Once I was an innocent baby shark and I became a good adult shark who looks very human. And I can't help but be with Akula here, all right? These kids did nothing wrong. But then Akula kind of turns and says, human yeah, too? humans are no better than sharks. I mean, currently, so far in the film, the humans look much better than the sharks. The sharks want to wipe out everyone on the earth and instantly tried killing everyone at the beginning of the film. Let me know if you'd kill a thousand baby sharks in the comments down below. I don't know if there was a thousand. What's worth more, a million baby sharks or a million humans you tell me honestly i do think the baby sharks are really cute so there's so many eggs not because the sharks have been getting really busy but because the sharks can reproduce asexually so there you go take note of about their morals here about what they thought about killing the lives of all these innocent babies just remember that hold on to that in your mind for later on in the film the group moves on ahead without killing the baby sharks and a cooler stays behind and she talks to that skinny shark from before and it turns out they're sisters now the shark leader, not liking how that conversation went, Someone says to bring out the big one. Freaking strap into your seats because the big one is coming. They ask Akula, where has she been? You know where she's been. She hasn't moved. She hasn't moved since you guys left the scene. You left. And as a distraction, this guy throws a rock at something. And everyone gets really angry at him, so I assume he hit a baby. Now cutting back to the spaceship, a shark is bashing on the door trying to get in. So naturally, the two remaining people in the ship are freaking the heck out. Now in this bit, they say those look like shark teeth, but they looked at nothing. I think they really front-loaded the budget, and it's all downhill from here. And a shark forces open the door. But they grab the only two weapons around, and the guys are screwed, man. Now cutting back to the A-team, they've managed to find themselves a car. And I hope they've buckled their seatbelts because here comes the big one this is the best movie of all time this is truly the pinnacle of fiction not for one second did i expect a whale shark to be in this film where the hell did this come from this was not in the beginning of the film whale sharks obviously typically a very peaceful creature this one not so much i hope it kills the entire cast i love this guy look at the teeth on this bad boy i want to go out like this man i want to be swallowed whole anyway akula throws a spear at it 
and it runs away. I do admit, I was kind of falling asleep in this film until that guy came out. That really saved it for me. It's kind of crazy. It was over as quickly as it began. Now the A team has made it back to the spaceship. They notice it's been broken into. Anyway, somehow those two people in the spaceship managed to kill that shark. I thought Moonrock was the only thing strong enough to beat them. Like the sharks were such a big threat that they had to launch them into space instead of shooting them with guns. And these guys killed the shark with freaking pipes. I don't think these two could take out a regular person with pipes, let alone a huge shark guy. Anyway, they've overcome impossible odds, so I'm sure they'll survive the rest of the film. These guys barely have a scratch on them. Like, what the heck? So conveniently, this woman has finished that renewable resource from earlier in the film. So they can actually launch the spaceship now and go home. It's like an algae-based biofuel or something like that. But if they use it, it will use up the oxygen. So they only get one shot at this. Now the sharks are here in full force. And one of them needs to make a sacrifice play. I guess they no longer need Henry to fix the ship. He says they've got enough qualified people here to fix the ship. So why did they save him in the first place? Henry's my third favorite character in the film. I would have let him die there. But he insists he's just got to distract the sharks and give him the slip and he'll be right back. He's got one leg. What the hell are you doing? He uses this gas canister like a witch's broom and goes flying past him. And then they instantly punch him and kill him. Also, he explodes himself and kills one shark. So he distracted them for maybe five seconds, blew up one shark and left the door open. Apparently that was good enough though. Soon after though, the sharks start loading up the eggs. Now the biofuel plant lady is running from MacBook to iPad. She's putting all the technology on to camouflage herself from the sharks because they only see an electromagnetic impulse stuff. Anyway, there was no point to her turning all that stuff on because she accidentally bumped something. And then, uh, yeah, she dies. I don't know why they didn't just kill her off earlier in the film. Other guy also dies who killed a shark with a wrench. He just gets punched and he's dead. The cool guy instantly gets disarmed and then he spits on the shark. Now they all just surrender to the one guy. This one shark. Not a special shark either, just a regular ass shark. So they're all kidnapped and they're taken before the main shark people. Akula professes that sharks are not her family, and instead Russian people are her family. Sharks are stoked because they now have a working spaceship to bring home their eggs. I guess the sharks know how to fly a spaceship. They've never owned one, but they can fly one. Now our girl Scar is coming to torture the rest of the crew. Now they decide that they're gonna fight back against the sharks. Why would they not fight that one and now they're gonna fight the biggest, baddest shark of them all, Scar, with only their fists? Well, luckily for the A team, they've been rescued and you'll never guess by who. Gotcha. <laughs> Leg guy somehow made it from being blown up to sneaking up behind the biggest, baddest shark of them all and being able to put enough power into a spear to thrust it right through her. Leg Guy's crazy, man. I'm so glad that Leg Guy has survived so long. Even though he just killed Scar, I think he's moved up a place in my favorite characters, all the way up to number two. Hell yeah, Henry. Can't wait to see you live forever, buddy. Now, for some reason, instead of staying on the spaceship and going back to Earth, they decide to jump out of the spaceship. Personally, I would have gone home to Earth, but they're gonna jump out of the spaceship. Good for them. Now, Akula decides to stay behind and wipe out the sharks once and for all. But little did she know that the sharks were coming to her. She fully just knocks out Queen Shark right out of the spaceship, and then implies that she gave her brain damage. Now, what she should do here is flip her onto her back, just in case. What she doesn't do is that. Now, not all the sharks got loaded up onto the spaceship. There's still a whole big group of them on the moon. So for the moment, they're protected by a minefield, I guess. They have time to talk about a plan. Now, the plan is to get the Russian guy's spaceship and nuke the sharks. Now, because of the nitrogen-rich soil that the Russian guy uses for his crops, he's able to do a kamikaze bomb attack. And when the spaceship and the nitrogen connect with the lava, it's going to create an explosion with a 50-mile radius. Relax, man. No need to blow up. The Russian guy here says to Akula that she's going to make it. She's going to be fine because she's the best fighter that he knows. Just as a reminder, this guy knows currently three people. He then gives her a little disc and he said it'll activate when she needs it most. 
ghost. Now they go out and they instantly start fighting a shark. Now I haven't edited this at all. It keeps doing this same cut over and over again. I have no idea what the hell's going on there. Are they only fighting one shark? What's happening? Get a shot with the leader shark and she's back with the whale shark. And she tosses something inside the whale shark's mouth. I didn't realize that what that was when first watching it. It is so unclear what happens here, but she throws the captain into the whale shark's mouth and then she throws in cool guy and it's down to just a cooler. Anyway, Russian guy fully just blows himself up, blows up the entire shark base. Also, Scar's back alive? I I don't know. The movie's really losing the plot here. I, I I don't know, man. They're really trying to wrap this thing up. But also, I don't understand why Scar's back. Oh, man. Scar's dead. Again. As a final act of revenge, the shark queen throws a cooler into the whale shark's mouth as she burns to death in the lava. I like this movie made such a big point earlier on about how they weren't going to kill the shark children because they're innocent kids. And then they proceed to blow up all the shark children. Like, why did they include that whole moral decision before if they were just going to blow them all up anyway and not have a second thought about it? And this leaves every single character dead. Every member of the crew dead. Every shark dead. Seemingly the only surviving character is the whale shark. Just kidding, the whale shark also dead. Now, this is where the movie starts getting a little silly. So the whale shark gets launched into space on a plume of lava. And luckily, it hurdles at the perfect trajectory to reach Earth. Somehow, by some miracle, it crashes into the water. And that little disc from earlier, it turns out it's a life raft. And those three people who got fed to the whale shark, they're alive, dude. Somehow, they survive being hurtled through space inside the corpse of a whale shark. Now, earlier in the film, it said it would take this long for the spaceship to reach the moon. Does that mean they were hurtling through space inside the whale shark for that long? So everyone is safe on the life raft. This is incredible. When suddenly, a cooler is pregnant and she live births a baby shark. Incredible. Finally, a new child is born. The baby shark takes a big bite out of this guy and a cooler freaks out, jumps into the ocean. And that's when tons of babies come out. That's right, they're setting up a sequel. So I had some technical difficulties while filming the conclusion of this video, so that's why I'm wearing different clothes. Now, overall, this film was terrible. Like, it was awful. Obviously, the effects a lot of the time were really bad. There's so much unneeded talking in this, weird dialogue going on. But for creativity alone, this is a 10 out of 10 film. This film needs to be nominated for every Oscar imaginable. It was the pinnacle of cinema. I will be praying every single night that we get a sequel. I love muscular shark people killing people. I want to see what effect these little baby sharks have on the world. So for final conclusion, I liked it. It was terrible. I hope there's a sequel. If you got to this point in the video, please hit the like button. I'd really appreciate that. Leave a comment if there's anything you want me to talk about next. I've got a bunch of ideas already, but if you guys have any better ones, I will absolutely use those. If you haven't already, please click subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. We're going to try and keep up the uploads to be weekly. But maybe sometimes we'll have more than one a week. But we will see. It depends how I go with time. Uh, love you. Appreciate you. Uh, uh, catch you in the ne next video. I uh, hope a shark doesn't get you before the next video comes out. Don't go swimming. Or, or, and also, uh, don't go to the moon. Ciao.